Then number eight is, uh, could my dietary supplements or other medications interfere with my treatment? Um, this is a, a tough question that most doctors will be incapable of answering. The simple answer, of course, is yes. And so we know, for example, you cannot do everything at once, right? So even people with you know, a lot of money that can afford to take anything, it doesn't work. We've seen this already. We're very wealthy people did all this stuff, and they never considered that different therapies and treatments interfere with one another. So you can't do everything at once. But on the other hand, what can you do that will benefit the overall treatment plan and not provide like an obstacle to progress? And so this is where you need someone that's really well versed on just all these different chemical and biochemical interactions. And unfortunately, if you're seeing a medical oncologist, those professionals are trained on chemotherapy. They're trained on immunotherapy. They are not trained on vitamins and minerals. And I listened to some of the stupidest things ever said. And one is, uh, so a patient that's dying of cancer, read something that curcumin can helpfully um, make a chemotherapeutic work better. So they ask a logical question. They go to the nurse because they couldn't meet the medical oncologist. So only the nurse is there. To, and they go, hey, nurse, can um, you guys add curcumin to my chemotherapy? And the nurse says, no, we don't do that because we're worried about the side effects. And the patient's like, I'm losing my hair. I got all these side effects from what you're doing to me right now. I'm so fatigued I can't stand. And you're worried about curcumin? And what that tells you is just the disconnect in medicine, like basic substances that have been used for significantly longer than chemotherapeutics. Those substances you hear, well, we're worried about side effects, but the substances that are actually harming people, they're not worried about that. You know, getting nausea, no problem, we'll give you another med. Getting some pain, no problem, we'll give you some morphine. And it's like, wait a minute, there's some disconnects here. And so one of the reasons why you want to kind of ask this question number eight, it gives you a sense of the approach. And a common mistake many patients make is they expect the medical oncologist to be an expert in all matters. Medical oncologists are not experts on exercise. They're not experts on dietary supplements. They're experts on cancer drugs. That's it. If you say, hey, could you show me in your education where you learned about how vitamins and minerals can fight cancer? They don't have that taught in medical school, so they never learn that stuff. If they know about it, it's whatever they read after medical school. That doesn't mean someone's an expert because they read something. So that's why question number eight is important. 